Okay, so we are going to look at a water slide problem. So here we have a water slide constructed, and it's constructed such that as the swimmer goes from off the bottom of the slide, they're traveling purely horizontally, and they're going to land five meters away from the end of the slide. If we want this, if we want to construct a slide that that does this, how high do we have to make that slide? Well, this is sort of an energy problem. Well, we can use energy to solve it. If we think about the energy in this situation, we know that the person has a certain amount of energy when they're at the top of the slide. Given our ideas of conservation of energy, they're going to have that same amount of energy when they hit the water. And they're also going to have that same amount of energy when they hit the bottom of the slide and anywhere in between, really. So how do I approach this problem to make it the most solvable? Well, we know that an object's total energy, initial, has to equal the total energy final. And one of the things that we want to keep in, in mind is what's our initial and what's our final, okay? So before we fully define that initial and final, let's remind ourselves what's involved in the total amount of energy. We're dealing only with mechanical energy in this case, so we know that the total initial energy is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy, and we know that the total final energy is the potential energy, and this is gravitational potential energy. We don't have any springs and we don't have any other types of potential energy. Final plus the final kinetic energy. Okay, so we know that the gravitational potential energy is dependent on the height. And we know that the kinetic energy is dependent on how fast the object is moving. But that how fast is, is really the magnitude of the velocity, the total how fast. So we're going to want to be a little strategic in this problem. If I say that my total energy has a reference height of the water level, okay, and I could do that, then the, the beginning of the slide, I have all gravitational potential energy, no kinetic energy. And at the end of the slide, end of the walk, I have all water, I have all kinetic energy, no potential energy. And that would work. Except I have to know how fast the object is going at this point. Now, at that point, the object has both vertical and horizontal motion. And I could determine how fast it's going based on that horizontal and vertical motion. But that's going to require some vectors and some vector algebra, which is totally fun and totally fine. But can I make my life a little bit more easier? And I can. What if instead of just looking at energy, um, I think about my kinematics. I know that the person is going off purely horizontally at this point. So all my motion energy is horizontal. So if instead I look at this as my height equal to zero value, does that give me an advantage? Well, I know then that the velocity at this point is equal to the total velocity of the object. And I know from kinematics that if I have a certain velocity and that lets me go a certain distance, I can determine how high this part of the slide is. Now, if I know how high this part of the slide is, then through my conservation of energy, I can determine how high this part of the slide is. And I just have to add those two together to get that total height. And I'll just reduce my workload a little bit, utilizing my tools and sort of visualization of the problem. So that's the approach we're going to take. So if I start this half of the problem as a kinematics problem, then move to an energy problem, I think I might be, I think I might be pretty good. So let's, let's keep our energy description going for just a little bit longer. We're going to call this height zero. And we're going to, sorry, we're going to call this height h1, okay? Now, if that is the case, then my gravitational potential energy at the beginning, at the start of the slide, so the initial is going to be at the start of the slide, and my final 
is going to be at the end of the slide. Then I have my mass times g times my initial height plus one half my mass times my initial speed squared. That's going to equal my mass times g times my final height plus one half mass times v times final squared. All right, so I know that my initial velocity is zero. The swimmer starts at rest, and I know that he ends at a height of zero. So that is also zero. And I end up with mass times gravity times my initial height, which I'll just use the capital H now that we're moving into our situation, times height one is equal to one half mass times v uh, speed squared at the end of the slide. And I want h1. So my height, 1, is going to equal 1 half v final squared divided by g. So my mass is cancel. I divide both sides by g. All right, well then I need v final squared. Now keep in mind v final squared is the speed at the end of the slide, and I know I'm going purely horizontally. That's how the slide's designed. So let's look at a kinematics problem. So my object is still the person. Now, from a kinematics perspective, my initial, my start, is when he goes off the slide. And my end is when he hits the water. Now, he's traveling forward and down. So two-dimensional motion here that we have to pay attention to, that projectile motion. Okay, so with two-dimensional motion, I'm just going to redraw the picture so as not to just make that all messy. Here we have the person going off the slide. And here's the water. I need to identify two origins. So let's identify the horizontal origin at the end of the slide. Oops, let's draw that in the right spot. And let's define the vertical origin at the water. Okay, so we'll make our list. So we both have a horizontal list we have to think about and a vertical list. So we have x initial horizontal, x final horizontal, v initial horizontal, v final horizontal, acceleration horizontal, and time. And we have x initial vertical, v initial, x final vertical, v initial vertical, v final vertical, acceleration vertical, and time. So my x initial horizontal, well, the object is starting at my horizontal origin. Final, it ends five meters away, we're given that. V initial horizontal, we don't know. We don't know the final horizontal, but we do remember that they are the same in projectile motion, reminding ourselves that that acceleration is equal to zero, and we don't know the time. Vertically, we have uh, v initial starting at some height. We don't know what it is. It's ending at my zero. Now I've changed my origin location, which is totally fine. It's sort of like its own separate problem, okay? X initial vertically is zero because it's traveling purely horizontal. X final vertical, we don't know. Acceleration vertical is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And time, again, we don't know. Now we needed v final the speed when it goes off the slide for this part, which is the initial horizontal for that part. And since they're the same, it's the initial or v final. So using our relationship that's going to get us there, x final is equal to x initial plus v initial t plus 1 half a t squared. x final is 5, x initial is 0, plus v initial horizontal, I don't know, t but my acceleration, of course, is zero. So five 
is equal to V initial horizontal times T. I need T. All right, well, the time the object is in the air horizontally is the same as the time the object is in the air vertically. So I can use my vertical information to get T. So we have X final is equal to X initial plus V initial T plus one half A T squared. My X final, oh, wait a minute, I'm doing something wrong. Well, let's just keep going with it. Something's not looking right, but I'll just keep doing it and we'll solve the problem together. Okay. I'm, I'm getting myself a little bit confused as to, that's okay though. X initial is zero is equal to X initial vertical, which I don't know. Why am I getting myself a little bit confused? Maybe it gives me, oh, <laughs> it does. So I figured out why I'm very confused. It gives me the time. Like, I can't solve this with time. I didn't read that part of the problem out loud. It tells me that they reach at five meters in a half a second. So we actually know the time here. So that is given to us. This would have been a very difficult problem to solve if that was not given to us. But it is given to us. So we have that half a second. Er, 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 it's given to us in the problem. All right, which actually tells us then that we do not need time because we have it. Erase, 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 erase. And so we have five equals the initial horizontal times 0.5 to half a second. So V initial horizontal equals 10 meters per second. So that's how fast we're moving now. We're going to come back to this because we need that too. But we, we don't know we need that yet. So my velocity going off the end of the slide is, ooh, it's moving. It's a good slide. 10 meters per second. So I can put that back here into my energy equation. And I end up with, a, I'm just going to look at the answer. I end up with a height, I don't have it because I did it differently in my keys. All right, we'll use the calculator. I end up with an initial height of 0.5 times 10 squared divided by 9.8, 5.1 meters. All right, so that's the height between this location and this location. So the end of the slide and the top of the slide. But I need the total height. So I also, that gives me part of my problem. I also need the height between the end of the slide and the water. And that's where my X final will come in. So if we look at the height between the end of the slide and the water, we're interested in this value. I'm gonna use orange to keep consistent. So we're interested in the vertical height of the slide itself at, at the end. So that's based on our kinematics problems. That's this height. So zero is equal to x initial vertical, which is what we want, plus v initial, which I don't have as zero, it's purely horizontal, plus one half negative 9.8 times point five squared. So I can solve for x initial vertical. So I have minus x initial vertical is equal to minus 4.9 times 0.5 squared. So that is x initial vertical is equal to 1.2 meters. So this height, height 2, is equal to 1.2 meters plus my height 1. So I have the total height is equal to height 1 plus height 2, which is equal to 5.1 plus 2.3, 6.3 meters tall. All right. Now, 
This is not the only way to solve this problem. There are more than one ways to solve this problem. And in fact, the answer key posted for you on D2L shows another way, a little bit of a different way, setting my height or um, level to equal zero at this point. So it gives you a little bit more difference. You still have to use kinematics and energy together. So make sure you're thinking about how these um, tools that we've learned relate to one another and how we can utilize them um, to make sure that we understand the whole problem. So energy conservation, kinematics, forces, they're all still related. So, all right, good job.